If you're looking for lightweight, compact, accurate, and easy to shoot rifle intended for the backcountry, stay tuned while we take a look at three of the rifles from three of the industry leaders. All right, before we get too deep into this video, let's go ahead and discuss why we're here. Uh, the point of the video is to talk about some rifles that are dedicated towards backcountry, backpack, sheep style hunts. Um, we grabbed three rifles from three of the best rifle makers out there. Uh, we got a Gunworks Climber, we got a Old Broomer from Blue Mountain Precision, and we got an Axial Precision Mountain Shadow. And what we're going to take a look at is the specs that everyone told us through polls and responses on the forum threads, what they thought were the important features. So we're going to talk about accuracy, shootability, we're going to talk about how they fed and how they cycled. We're going to take a look at the internal magazine length of the box, magazine box in case those of you are interested who want to reload. And then we're going to talk about the weight and the overall length. So the goal of this was not to have a winner. What our goal is is to discuss those features, talk about the important specs, and most specifically talk about the accuracy and shootability. I think that uh, a lot of you guys can't do or won't have the opportunity to do with three separate expensive rifles. Um, we chose to have them all chambered in 6.5 PRC. The reason why we chose that is twofold. The 6.5 PRC and the 6.5 caliber in general is a great cartridge, great caliber for long range shooting for game I feel under, under the size of an elk. So sheep, mule deer, uh, antelope, stuff like that. So it'll fit right in line with what we're trying to accomplish here. The second part of that is the factory ammo available from Hornady seems to be shooting very very well in almost every rifle and we thought that that would give a great comparison between the rifles and with these particular three rifles they each did send us their own ammo and we will also talk about that a little bit as well not specifically but just basically overall performance so let's get started and move into looking at these rifles. Alright, in this segment we're going to take a look at the sheep rifle that Blue Mountain Precision sent us. And we're going to start with the components. The action is a Lone Peak Razor TI Titanium Short Action. It's a Remington 700 clone. It's got your typical plunger style ejector. It's got an M16 extractor. Side bolt release. This is one of the best timed actions that I've ever had my hands on. I know a lot of guys don't even notice it, but this has really no noticeable cock on close, which is a welcome addition to a lot of the clones that I've had my hands on. Some of them just aren't as timed as well. So move on to the proof. 22 inch long Sendero Light, 8 twist, 4 groove, chambered in 6.5 PRC. It's got a side discharge brake, which is mandatory in my opinion. I can't stand radio port brakes blowing that dirt into my face. Set up with some Hawken rings and came with a Swarovski Z6 3-18 by 50 with the BDC reticle. And we'll come back to that here in a little bit. It's got Hawken's bottom metal with a single stack Wyatt box. Real quick, quickly we're gonna we're gonna touch on that. Um, it feeds all right. I didn't have any failure to feeds, but I've had better feeding uh, setups before. When it gets back to Eric, he is going to replace it with a new re newly released uh, Wyatt box specifically designed for the PRC, which I know is going to feed a little bit better. Again, there were no failure to feeds, but uh, I think it can be better in that that new Wyatt box will make that better. This has a trigger tech trigger in it, and this one is repeatedly breaking at 12 ounces. Very nice trigger. The stock is a AG composite privateer. When I first pulled it out of the box, I wasn't overly excited about it. 
uh, being a classical style stock, I know a lot of guys after sheep rifles probably would be okay with that. But after shooting it, I, I quickly changed my mind. It does have a little bit more vertical grip here than your typical classical style stock. And it doesn't uh, drop at the comb and heel as much as a lot of the other stocks. And then after shooting in a while, I it does have a real nice uh, thumb shelf here. Again, this is not a tactical prone style stock. Uh, so... It's not quite as nice as a dedicated prone stock, but it is very, very well at having a balance there. And we'll talk about that because it's going to have a total effect on the shootability of the rifle. Real quickly, we're going to do a cutaway here, and I'll do some video of the internal magazine. We'll look at the bedding, and then we'll look at the case that it came in. I know for the price, a lot of guys are going to want to know how, how it came set up. So we'll take a look at that. All right, you can see here the magazine box from the Blue Mountain Precision 6.5 PRC at 2.979. And the factory ammo is 2.950, and it feeds from here and fits in here fine. And the ammo that Eric put together for the rifle obviously shoots and, and cycles through here very well as well. Um, one thing to point out, it currently does have a single stack Wyatt box and follower and Wyatt has started making a 6.5 PRC follower so when it gets back to the shop Eric's going to replace this with a specific to the PRC follower just to make feeding a little bit smoother. Not that it's really horrible but it was a little clunkier than some other cartridges that I have cycled. And then we'll take a look at the bedding here. It is beautiful as you would expect from a rifle like this and the accuracy is shown. Like I said, no surprises here. Here we have the Blue Mountain Precision sheep rifle case. Nice foam SKB case with ammo cutouts, range finder cutouts, and a place for the bipod. Both taken off and installed on the rifle. All right, now that we've taken a look at the the magazine length, the bedding, and the case, let's move on to the meat and potatoes of the review. Talk about accuracy, precision, uh, field shooting, and then we'll wrap it up with the summary. So, the ammo that Eric sent was a load that he developed with 140 Burger hunting VLDs running approximately 2885 foot per second uh, across my magne magneto speed. And then I chronographed 147 factory Hornady ammo at roughly 10 foot per second slower. Um, accuracy at 100 yards or 200 yards was actually when I was shooting a little bit better with the factory ammo but both were hovering, hovering right around a half minute. Uh, did verify some long distance stuff here in Kansas and precision and accuracy was right on. Most of the shooting was done in Arizona at around 6,000 foot and we'll, we'll kind of get into that a little bit more. Now this BDC reticle was set up 4,000 foot uh, out to 700 yards and it, it did that well but when you change conditions change elevations it kind of loses it and you can recalibrate or do some homework and figure that out um, this is not the scope that I would uh, order if I were going to get this rifle but it will suit a lot of people and we'll, we'll talk about that real quick if you are willing to do a little bit of homework to validate that the the sub tensions are correct for the hunting conditions that you're going to be in this setup just like it is will serve you well if you're not into dialing turrets and don't want to mess with all that stuff you just want to range it and hold the reticle on there with a little bit of homework this will do it I personally would get a scope more suited for dialing to extend the distance because this ac the, the accuracy or the precision on the rifle is very 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 high we took it out to 750 yards using the 700 reticle and with 
the 140 VLDs that Eric sent, as well as the factory ammo, this rifle had absolutely no problem maintaining sub 0.5 MOA on rocks. Uh, from we didn't do any crazy up and down shooting. There, there just wasn't any available. But we did do some angled shooting. You know, out probably five, six degrees up, five, six degrees down, and again from field positions no no bench stuff all from the dirt different weird body positions and th this rifle had no problem maintaining half minute out 750 yards with both ammos so to me that's the absolute most important thing in a rifle i like lightweight i can i can deal with compact those are features that are that are nice but if it won't hit to extended distances for me it's not going to work um and this rifle is more than capable so let's let's go ahead and uh, talk about we got uh, 43 inches overall length. I know that's a, important to a lot of guys. They want to make sure that they're not going to have to mess with a long barrel going through brush or pulling it in and out of a scabbard. This has a very nice form factor, and at seven pounds six ounces for the this entire setup. Again, if you're not into dialing and you are okay with doing a little bit of homework. This setup, just like it is, is going to suit a lot of people out to distances that are farther than a lot of guys want to shoot, especially when your average sheep shot is going to probably be in the 400-yard range. Um, this setup, just like it is, is going to be great. 7 pounds, 6 ounces, and the overall length is very nice. If you are wanting to shoot farther, you could order one of these rifles or have Eric swap out this uh, optic but you could get whatever optic you want and extend the distance. The shootability is there, the precision's there. I know without a doubt this rifle is going to be capable. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. If you're looking for a general purpose, lightweight, compact, highly precise rifle uh, for mountain hunting, sheep hunting, goat hunting, you're not going to be disappointed in this rifle. Give the guys a Blue Mountain Precision a call, talk to them. Uh, you could you can buy this exact rifle or you get one just like it. Or maybe you want to tweak a few things and I know that they'll do that for you. So again, awesome rifle. Uh, we talked about all the features so you can make the decision on what works best for you. Uh, again, maybe you want to tweak something or maybe this is the exact one for you. Stay tuned. We're going to take a look at the rest of the rifles that we looked at in this shootout. All right, now we're going to take a look at the Gunworks Climber. This one is in 6.5 PRC. I'll kind of walk through the components and then we'll talk about how it shot. And then I'll go uh, take it apart for you. We'll look at the uh, how they chose to use uh, a bedding block and a uh, wedge up here to keep the action held in place versus <clears throat> your typical bedding. So it's got their action that they make in-house. This one is in titanium. And we'll come back and talk about the features of it. It's got a 20 inch proof Sendero light carbon barrel. It's got their self timing side discharge brake. It's got their bottom metal, a Trigger Tech primary trigger, and then their stock, the climber stock. So we'll start here with the action. It does have a side bolt release. It's basically a 700 clone, but there are some different features that uh, are proprietary to Gunworks. The extractor itself is actually in the bolt. It's in the bolt face. It's not exposed. You can't see it from the outside. It's not like a Remington 700 extractor. It's not like a Saco, and it is not like an M16. It's completely pri pri proprietary, <clears throat> and it, it seems to work just fine. Um, I've personally never had any problems with any of uh, the typical extractors. And it's got dual plunger ejectors. And then probably the two neatest features is it's bayonet style uh, firing pin assembly, cocking piece assembly. <clears throat> so you can take it apart by hand without tools to clean it up. Make sure you keep your uh, firing pin nice and clean and debris free so that you don't have any uh, failure to fires or any inaccuracy issues due to ignition inconsistencies and then probably the coolest feature is it has dual uh, opposed cocking pieces 
They're 180 degrees apart. It's got the typical one that you would see in most Remington 700 clones, and then it's got one 180 degrees apart. And what that does is it allows the rifle to still have uh, the firing pin fall that it should, but it's smoother to open after firing to cock the rifle, which is very nice. <clears throat> this one is set up with a loopholed Mark V HD 3.6 to 18. It's got the Gunworks reticle in it. It's actually a pretty nice reticle. It's not my favorite, but it does a very good job uh, for allowing you to hold off and uh, in one MOA increments. We're not going to talk a whole lot about the scope itself, but uh, and it's got their Gunworks rings on it, and then their turret that was set up for 5,000 foot at 2,800 foot per second with with uh, their ammo using 147 ELDMs. And we'll go to the stock here. Like I said, it's the climber stock. It's a very nice stock. It's got a, a negative comb here. It's basically a, a progression and improvement over their last stock. It does have a very nice grip here. It's not what I would consider 100% vertical, but it is pretty vertical. It's got a real nice thumb shelf. And they did a real good job at, at getting this right, at least for my hands, and I think it'll work for most guys. When you have your trigger finger where it needs to be naturally, you're not torquing the stock at, at all. Um, all of your fingers have a nice, comfortable input to the stock without causing torque, and your thumb has a nice place to rest here without you moving it around and torquing the rifle when you fire it. Uh, it does have twin flush cups back here, which is nice. No sling stud on the bottom to, to catch on your rear bag if that's what you're using, and that's what I use. And then it has a very nice feature up here where the front Picatinny rail is recessed into the stock. So it's not really a huge deal if you're shooting prone off a bipod, but if you do load development or occasionally shoot off of a front rest, this is really nice. You don't have to remove it to keep it from snagging, causing vertical in your shots. It also has a flush cup here in the Picatinny rail. Overall, the stock is probably one of the best parts of this rifle and the thing that makes it, in my opinion, what it is. And we'll get into the performance real quick. I took, I took this rifle pretty much right out of the box. Uh, we shot it down in Arizona uh, from around 5,000 to 7,000 foot of elevation. This uh, turret was set up for 5,000 foot, so we weren't able to always use the turret itself, but it does have MOA markings on the bottom. We were able to use a calculator and get the drops figured out. This thing measure or kept groups with the 147 factory ELDMs as well as their ammo under half minute with ease out to 1130 yards which is as far as we shot it. Uh, from prone and field positions I can't think of one shot where I where I took where I couldn't see the impact. The stock and, and the overall rifle setup do a very good job of, of recoiling straight back and allowing you to spot your hits which is very important to me especially in situations where you're hunting by yourself um, but it's also important even with a spotter I kinda like to see if you do miss on an animal it's nice to get a follow-up shot uh, without having to be told what the correction needs to be so we brought it back here to Kansas um, I did some more shooting with it uh, on steel it, it has shot some amazingly small groups several several quarter minute groups out um, with both their ammo and factory ammo so you get away with shooting either one if you don't want to I, I think you know for the guy that's going to want this rifle and we'll, we'll talk about that more in the summary their ammo is a good option but if you don't want to spend the money on the ammo the factory ammo seems to be working great they are uh, both the factory ammo as well as their ammo, ammo with this 20 inch barrel are going right around 2800 foot per second so um, you're, you're compromising with this sheet package and the short barrel 
some performance in the the cartridge but it's all a trade-off so as far as accuracy it it met my expectations and as far as shootability from field positions it is up there with the best of them uh, it's exactly what I would expect so now we'll go ahead and tear it apart and we'll take a look at the a little closer look at the bottom metal we'll look at the magazine box and then I'll show you what the uh, bedding looks like All right here is the gun case that the climber came in very nice setup okay here's the climber magazine box you can see right about 2.98 which is enough for the factory ammo with the 147 ELDs and obviously it shoots both the factory ammo and their ammo very well okay here is their bottom metal I would put it on par with the best in the industry and this setup this magazine setup the box as well as their uh, follower setup uh, I had absolutely zero problems with cycling the PRC which you know some of the rifles out there have struggled a little bit with those longer cartridges and this one does extremely well again no cycling issues whatsoever alright so here is the climber stock with the action barreled action remove you see it's got aluminum bedding block in there and then right here at the front is the wedge that I was talking about so what you do is you set the barreled action in there and you torque that wedge down to 40 inch pounds and it wedges the recoil lug front it pushes it rearward and then the rear of the recoil lug is resting on that aluminum block so there is no need for bedding and the accuracy of the rifle absolutely proves that this system works just do a real quick close-up of that recessed front Picatinny rail and then you can see the uh, screw hole for the wedge on the uh, recoil lug wedge there All right, so let's summarize the Gunworks climber We'll start with the rifle itself like I said you can get the rifle with a steel action steel barrel for around six thousand dollars and that's really in in the price range with a lot of the what I would consider the better customs that guys are putting out that are ready to shoot where you you add your optics and go do your load drops and all that stuff so it might be on the high side but it is it's still competitive I believe and then we'll step up to this package here just as you see it verified out to a thousand yards zero to two hundred yards with a with a loophole scope at ten thousand five hundred dollars now a lot of people will balk at the price but I think that for the right guy it's worth it if you demand the most out of your gear for hunting and you're into long range hunting but you don't have the time this is a great option for you uh, $10,500 when you add up all the price there's not a whole lot of extra money in there for them to go verify it get it zeroed and make sure that it's going to be ready to perform up to your standards so I do think that it is worth it for a guy that wants the best he can get but just doesn't have the time to go figure it out go do the load development go do the drop validation and figure all that stuff on his own so we'll, we'll summarize this rifle real quick it's up at the top end of the the price range on rifles but it does everything that I would demand out of a rifle and it will save you a lot of time if you don't have time uh, the brake is very effective the stock is one of the two best stocks I've ever had the pleasure of shooting it allows you to spot shots again the 6.5 PRC is not a huge recoil in rifle but it does does have a little bit of recoil and if you don't have the right setup would cause you to go off target when you shoot so we'll we'll summarize all of the sheep rifles at the end of the video but uh, 
I do think that this has a place and I think that it is a is a good value for people that demand the the most out of a rifle but don't have time so now we'll move into the next rifle all right in this section we're going to take a look at the axial precision rifle that they sent us and this one is the mountain shadow again in a 6.5 PRC we'll start it with the action it's their in-house action it's a again a 700 clone it does have a side bolt release it uses a M16 extractor. It's got dual plunger ejectors, and pretty much your typical Remington 700 uh, setup as far as the rest of it goes. Now they do have some patented technology as far as keeping the shell, the cartridge, and bullet in a line with the the barrel. Uh, from my understanding, and I may not have a, a good grasp on it, it's similar to board and bumps. Basically, um, it allows there to be some slop in the bolt until it gets in the uh, closed position, and then it, it keeps the bolt locked tight and in alignment so that it aids in accuracy. And I'm guessing with the patent technology that it's just a little bit different than some of the other options out there. Um, it came with a Trigger Tech Diamond Trigger. This one was set at uh, 1.5 pounds. They can obviously be adjusted lower. I didn't mess with it. It seemed to be fine where it was. Uh, it's a proof Cinder Light 20 inch barrel. It's got an axial precision a side discharge brake. It's only got uh, one port or one port on each side. To me, this would be the one thing I would change if I were going to order this rifle. Uh, the brake is just not enough for maintaining a sight picture from field positions. And I'll kind of touch on that a little bit, a little bit here in a second when we get to the stock. It, I mean, it's a 6.5 shooting a 147 bullet. It doesn't have a lot of recoil, but it's noticeably noticeably more than the other rifles that we shot uh, in the review, and then other rifles that I that I own myself. The bottom metal is uh, very similar to uh, Hawkins bottom metal, and they may actually be using Hawkins bottom metal. It is very nice bottom metal. It's on par with the best in the industry. Uh, came with a this rifle for the review came with a Zeiss uh, 3 to 18 scope the uh, scope weighs 22 ounces and it came with tally rings the entire rifle package minus the bipod was 7 pounds 14 ounces so it puts the rifle just a little bit over 6 pounds which is right in line with the other ones and we're going to talk about the stock real quick I've actually done a review on this stock, so if you've seen that, you're going to know I, I don't have any different opinion. I haven't changed my opinion on it. It does have a very nice uh, negative comb, which aids in maintaining sight picture. It's got a very good compromise here at the angle here that helps it not uh, drop away on the shot. And then this input right here, when you place your finger on the trigger naturally you have very nice input to the stock without inducing torque and wanting to you know thumb press or add torque with your thumb or your fingers so this stock picked up the slack of the brake um, again I don't want to keep harping on it they can put whatever brake you want on it and, and they will do that and, and I absolutely would do that just because for me, there's no reason not to anymore. The sound doesn't doesn't bother me. I always wear earplugs when shooting, and I try my best to carry them in hunting situations. Um, if I don't have them, then I, I lost them or forgot them. So sound's not an issue. I would rather maintain my sight picture. Like I said, this I had no problems maintaining sight picture with the rifle because of the stock's performance. I would just change the brake. So this rifle came to me after our trip to Arizona so all the shooting was done here in Kansas at 1100 foot 
I did shoot the ammo that they provided, which was 143 ELDXs that they loaded up, and they were running about 30, 30 foot per second. And then I shot some factory ammo out of it, uh, 147 ELDMs, and they were running around 28, 30 foot per second. And it had no problem maintaining half minute out at uh, steel at a thousand yards. You know, if we shot from 400 out to a thousand in all instances. It had no problem maintaining a half minute. Uh, in the calm conditions, obviously, when we were shooting in the wind conditions, I had some uh, missed wind calls, but it maintained even in that half minute vertical. So, this rifle performed just like I would expect, and it performed right in line with the other rifles. So, pricing the rifle itself is going to run around uh, $6,000 for the Mountain Shadow. They have options. You can pick your ring set up, your mount set up. You can pick a few different scopes, and you can also pick right on the website the trigger that you want. And I believe in the Mountain Shadow line, they only have trigger tech options, but I think they could probably put in another trigger if that's what you really wanted. And you can actually, like the Gunworks uh, website, you can pick your colors and actually see what the rifle looks like. They do have some different uh, color options for molding in on the stock as well, and you can talk to the guys at Axial Precision about that if you if you want it. Like I said, the rifle package itself is six thousand, or the the rifle itself is six thousand dollars, and then you can add on uh, scopes or just buy your own. Maybe you've already got one laying around. So let's go ahead and take it apart real quick. Uh, we'll look at the internal magazine length. We'll take a look at the bedding and then I'll come back and we'll we'll wrap it up and then we'll move into summarizing all three rifles and and where they fit together and, and who they might be for. Alright here's a video clip of the bedding and the inletting on the axial precision and here you can see the internal length of the magazine real quick look at the bottom metal while it's out. Alright, so we talked about the features. Uh, we talked about how it performed. I think I did forget to tell you the overall length. I know a lot of guys care about this is 40 inches. Uh, it's right in line with the other ones. The There are several options as far as just buying the rifle or adding, adding it and making it a package and those prices were right in line with the other rifles. Uh, they will develop a load and make sure the rifle shoots and you can buy that ammo from them so it is obviously again right in line with the other rifles great for guys who want the ultimate performance but don't have the time to mess with that and as I've said before the 6.5 BRC does seem to be shooting factory ammo very well so that is always an option uh, if that's something that uh, you're interested in so I think this rifle fits right in with the other three. It, it is a great option if maybe some of the features of the other rifles didn't suit you. This one might be for you. So uh, take a look at the Axial Precision and then here we'll move into summarizing and talking about all three and wrapping the video up. Real quickly I want to touch on a topic we skipped over on the Axial Precision and the Gunworks and that's magazine capacity. We looked at the internal uh, magazine box length I forgot to discuss the capacity so both of them will hold two down in one of the chamber and they did feed as you would expect from a, a 700 or a clone and didn't have any issues with the cartridges cycling through all three cartridges alright let's talk about the features and the performance start with the accuracy and the performance. The accuracy and performance of all three rifles was near identical. Uh, really couldn't pick one that would uh, outperform the other. They had no problem maintaining half minute accuracy out to every distance that we shot with both factory ammo as well as the ammo that they included. And as far as shootability from field positions, really no discernible difference. Uh, they all shot basically the same. Now, 
they did have a little bit different feel as as far as actually shooting them that we talked about in the breakdown but as far as actual outcome on the target not a lot of difference at all let's talk about the overall length so the blue mountain precision came in at 43 inches due to its two inch longer barrel it was a little bit longer obviously the gunworks came in at 41 inches and the axial precision came in at 40 inches again those can be configured uh, if you want a longer barrel or maybe even a little bit shorter barrel they can build you a different rifle and would be happy to do so but that's what the overall lengths were based on the rifles that we tested now let's break down the weight the bear rifles were all right at six pounds give or take an ounce or two and so th there's not going to be any thing that you can tell the difference as far as the uh, the weight goes um, the packages there was a little bit of difference the blue mount precision total package came in at seven pounds six ounces due to the little bit lighter weight on the uh, swarovski z6 that was on it and it, uh, the other two were right at eight pounds the gunworks had the loophole on it and the axial precision had the zeiss v6 on it so if you're looking at a package rifle with all of uh, the features that we've looked at and the scope on it all set up ready to roll that might help you make a decision there again those rifles can be reconfigured with different optics so if you like one rifle but you don't necessarily like the optic go ahead and give them a call and tell them what you're looking for I think they'll be able to get you fixed up uh, let's talk about the price the bare rifle prices the Gunworks was $7,500, the Blue Mountain Precision was $5,600, and the Axial Precision was $6,100. That's just the rifle, no ammo. Um, you can put on your, your own optics, work up your own load, or in in the case of the Gunworks, buy their ammo, buy some different ammo, whatever whatever suits you. The package prices, the Blue Mountain Precision came in at $10,000, the Gunworks was $10,500, and the Axial Precision was $9,100. Now, we'll talk about what that actually gets you. For the Blue Mountain, it got you everything we looked at. The scope, the mount, the rifle, the hard case, and a few boxes of ammo custom developed for that rifle. The Gunworks came with four boxes of gunworks ammo that they have developed not necessarily specific to that rifle but all of their rifles shoot it very well it came with the hard case it came with the loophole obviously mounted it came with the custom turret and dialed out to a thousand yards and then the axial precision came with a load developed but you would have to go do your drop validations if you're a turret custom turret guy get your own custom turret and then it just came with a hard case so those are the what I would consider the important features of the rifle and then like we just got through talking about the feeding was the same essentially with all three of them as far as feeding from the magazine and then the internal magazine box links were relatively the same so let's move into the general thoughts and wrap this video up all right let's wrap up this sheep rifle shootout <clears throat> it was never our intention to have a clearly defined what we call winner um, we were just intending to grab some of the best rifles out there intended for sheep style hunts goat hunts lightweight uh, long range precision hunts uh, for customers that demand the most out of their equipment both on the weight spectrum as and the performance side so we'll start with the blue mountain precision uh, Eric did a really good job of grabbing components out there there's a lot of thought put into it and I think he nailed it for for what he was trying to accomplish. It is lightweight. It was super easy to shoot. It was accurate. I was able to spot all my shots. It it from the components out there is definitely up there with the best of them. And I would not hesitate to buy that rifle if that has the feature set that you're after. We'll move on to the Gunworks rifle on the other end of the spectrum as far as price goes. This rifle was built from the ground up with the intent of maintaining weight very reasonable and accuracy and shootability with the best of them and they nailed it um, again there these were not off-the-shelf components so they put all those pieces together uh, with engineering and it, it shows so you get a you get a package ready to shoot out of the box they they'll send you the ammo 
um, scoped, dialed, ready to shoot at 1,000 yards. I strongly suggest you confirm the data, make sure that it works for where you're going to be, and get familiar with the rifle, but it's ready to go. And then the axial precision's right in the middle. Again, it's a package setup that they developed from the ground up. So they built the stock to suit their needs, the action, and then add, add a barrel. And they did a very good job of that as well. Uh, again, it was intended to keep the weight down, keep shootability up there with the best, accuracy up there with the best, and they nailed it. So I don't think you can go wrong with any three of these rifles. Uh, take a look at the feature set, see which ones appeal to you the most, and then give them a call. I actually strongly suggest you give all three companies a call and ask them any questions. Go ahead and head over to longrangeonly.com. We'll have a link to the thread to discuss the video on the forum. If you're not a member, go ahead and sign up. It's quick, it's easy, it's free. I tried my best to include all the things that were important to those that I polled. I included the things that are important to me, the things that I would consider important to almost anybody, but I'm sure I left something out. Go ahead and ask the questions and we'll try our best to get those answered in a timely fashion. Please like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.